Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today what we're going to do is we're going to do part three of this amazing set on uh, doing random forest classification on taxpayer information. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out ways of making random forest models, getting the attributes, that was part one and two, right? Figuring out which attributes were more important was part two. And in this one we're going to figure out how to make it more accurate. So we're going to start off with right here, we're going to set a seed to 100. And we're going to split the data, the data set that we have, which is in data right here. We're going to split this off to a 0.75 in one set and 0.25% in another. So out of that, we're going to have a train set, which is right here. That's what this is, off of 0.75%. So we put that then into this and then we in the train set. And then we have the validation set, which is not the train. That's what this is with the negative in front of the train. So we have two. Now we got train set and valid set. And then you can use the summaries down here to see what exactly is in each of these. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a random force model with default parameters. Default parameters means what are they at the base. So at the baseline, doing it this way with the random force function, which is right here, uh, it ends up being about 69%. So if we hit this and run this, and then we go and look at it, Let's just see what happens here. We have, it says 32.4%, which ends up being about 68%, 68.6%, basically 69%. So that's what our, our the, the error rate is this, and the opposite of that would be your accuracy rate. So it tells you the number of trees by default, the number of variables tried at each split, and of course the confusion matrix down below which tells you the breakdown of you know percentages of each class error and so on so we're going to do that but then what we want to do is we want to try and get it even higher so that's about 68 to 69 percent but let's say i want to get it over 70 percent so what we're going to do is this next one which is still the random force function but this one we're adding some extras to it so you'll see the beginning parts the same but then we have this n tree equals 500 and m try equals four okay so what we've done is we've added some specifics to it that we didn't have before the rest of it's the same just this bit right inside right here is added now and so if we run that let's just run this whole block right here give it a second see how this is lower for the error rate than it was before not a whole lot but a little bit the m try changing this will give it a little bit more uh, accuracy. Okay, not a whole lot, but I'll, but it does give you a little bit more. So now from that, we can predict on this training set, right? So that one's model two, that's what it's called. So what we can do is we can sit, use the predict function right here on it. And when we do that, we then have the predict train data frame, which is right here. And we can do this, we can check the actual classification accuracy so if we do a table on that of predict train and train set dollar sign which is the political party the way to access the political party field or column we just hit this enter and there we go so that's the uh, table on that but to check the importance of the variables we can use this remember we did this earlier and again, it's the same thing. So if I go down here and look at either the decrease, mean decrease in accuracy or the mean decrease in GI and I, the same thing holds true as what we saw earlier is the higher the number, the more important those fields are. So in this case, we now have the field called party, which is extremely important. We have the same ratios we had before. So we know that the filed in 2017, 2016, and 2015 are the least important but they're still important, they're over five still. Whether how many cars they have, uh, household age, are they married, um, you know, household income and household debt level are probably the second and third most important there. So that's the variable importance or the importance of them and then we can do this also, which shows you this, all this does is very important, variable importance plot. You take this and it goes right here and this just tells you which ones are more important. So you can clearly see that the most important is right here is party, then as I said, HHI, your household income and household debt level are next and so on, okay? Now what we're gonna do, you take a step further here, is I wanna identify the M try. 
MTRY for this model. So see what we used it up before, but how do you know it's four? It could be seven, it could be 10, it could be three. So what we do is down here, we use this bit of code right here. And uh, basically the MTRY, the best way to say it is it's used to hone in and slightly decrease, or slightly increase, I'm sorry, the accuracy of a classification data set. So if we use this right here, and then we plot it. So what this is doing, it's creating a four uh, that runs through of the mod, it creates a new one off this random forest again with different M try. So it's gonna give, instead of just doing M try equals four or five or six, it does it for all of them between three and 10, okay? And what it does is we start, we have I equals seven, so for this, it'll do seven of these. So obviously the reason why it says I equals seven is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it'll run through it each time. And what it's going to do, it's going to predict based on this and put in the pred valid, the value for that. So watch, if we plot A, so A is where this comes in right here, equals the mean of the pred of this. Okay, so we want to have the actual mean of it. What it's going to do, let me run it through and I'll show you exactly what this does. It'll just actually plot this. And then you can, from that, figure out which one. Give it a few seconds here and it'll run. Do, do, do. It will fill in here in a second. There it goes. And you can tell from this which one is the best value for that. In this case, we actually have four values that are the same. So they're up here, uh, four of them. Now, this is because I'm rerunning this and I've already run this before. The actual best value ends up being four because what happens is it keeps running and filling these values back into it. And you know, the problem is it's not as accurate as it was when you run it one time through. So if I were to go through this whole bit of code that we did for these three videos, do it one time through, you'll see that it's four is the M try that we want to have this guy right here. Um, but anyway, so what we've done here is I've shown you how to make it more accurate. You end up with about a 70%, 70.2% to be exact for the uh, M tr or for the uh, accuracy with this one. The previous one, remember in part one, we got 65%. The second time we ran through, we got 69%. But remember part two, we also determined which attributes are most important. We also saw that repeated again here, they're the exact same ones, except now we have this new field called party. And uh, in the end, Results are, by running this through several times, we have a more accurate random force model. Now, you don't necessarily have to go through every single one of these to do this. So, as you saw, when I looked at the original data set, and I brought in and scored it with the data we came from our first model, the first random force model, where we had 65% accuracy, every single one, because we did it for Democrats, right? We could have done it for Republicans or Independents, doesn't matter. Every single one, when we compared them, was accurate and correct. It was correctly scored to a one if they were Democrat and to a zero if they were independent or Republican. So we had a very high scoring off that based on the fact that the attributes, household income and household debt level being the most important ones, were able to predict what someone's political party of choice was or is. The other ones, if we'd taken those out and probably uh, gone to just the whether they did the income tax returns in 2017, 16, and 15 would not have been anywhere near as accurate. But when you put them all together, it makes it very accurate. So again, it depends on the data, but this is how you do random forest classification on a data set like taxpayer information. There's a lot of these different uh, classification data sets out there. It's kind of interesting to do this. And I can actually now predict what someone's political party of choice is or how they would vote most likely. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. You now have three different parts to this. You have part one, part two, and part three. If you haven't watched part one and part two, please go back and watch those because you need to especially watch part one where we build the data or the uh, random force model in the first place and explain a whole lot to you. And then the second one where we look at the attributes more and figuring out which ones are more important and uh, showing you how to do that quickly. And the third one was just to show you how we can you know, make this a little bit more accurate, how we can play with the data and the uh, random forest model to increase accuracy if we wanted to. We don't have to in this case, but I just wanted to show you that anyway. So thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, share, 
and also leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.